In the first two installments in this series, we explored new understandings about the complex structure and function of the stratum corneum and looked at the science behind the formulation of body washes. These insights provide a new way to look at the skincare products we recommend to our patients. But there is another factor to consider, and that is how our patients differ when it comes to both skin biology and use of their skincare products on a daily basis. In fact, men and women appear to have different behaviors and practices when it comes to their body wash products, and understanding these differences can help us make better, more informed recommendations to our patients. Our market research shows that consumer preferences do play a role in whether consumers try the product and whether they continue using it over time. And this is for two reasons. The first is that patients experience products with their eyes, ears, and other sense organs, and this becomes the basis for judging how effective the product is. While we know that ultimately ingredients are the most important thing to skin health, the way the product looks, smells, and feels is also extremely important. For example, opaque products are rated higher on moisturization. A creamy look gives a perception of a denser lather and thus is rated higher on moisturization benefits. The second reason is if a consumer does not enjoy using a product, then they will not continue to use it. An example is lather. A consumer is looking for a product that lathers. The perception is if it does not lather, then it does not clean the skin. The skincare market has recently seen an explosion of products specifically designed for men. Is that just good marketing, or do men and women really need different products? So our research shows that men and women do have different preferences. They also have different biology and skincare behaviors. In terms of biology, men's skin is thicker, oilier, and hairier than women's. Men also have a thicker epidermal layer. Men's skin has lower pH values as well. In terms of skincare behavior, men tend not to think about their skin until an issue arises. Men are also not conditioned to moisturize their skin. However, dry skin is the number one complaint we hear from men. Men tend to be over-aggressive cleansers because they want to physically feel the product working. As a result, we formulate our products to address the different preferences, needs, and biology for men and women. The way the product looks, translucent or opaque, the way the product feels, creamy or thin, or the way the product smells and leaves your skin feeling after the shower. As a result, we formulate to take into account the preferences, needs, and behaviors of men and women. For example, we can adjust the way the product looks, feels on skin during use, and affects the skin after a shower. We drilled down to understand the key factors that impact men's preferences, and we found four key factors. The first one is fragrance. Fragrance during use and the longevity after use is important. Lather is also important. A lack of lather equals a possible product rejection. A clean rinse is important, a clean after feel, so it doesn't feel heavy or greasy on the skin. Lightweight moisturization is important. And lastly, refreshment. The end goal is a sense of transformation. All of these factors can possibly play a role in continued product use. We have found that men prefer a lighter feeling cleanser. An opaque formulation is seen as having a heavy moisturizer and leaving a residue that men do not like. And they also feel that this is less masculine. This has been proven through two Dove Men Plus Care studies. How do these kinds of consumer preferences differ from what women are looking for? Women tend to look for the exact opposite that men are looking for. They want that opaque, creamy looking formulation with a thick, rich lather that leaves their skin feeling moisturized. Do you find that dermatologists have different preferences in their patients? Understandably, dermatologists recommend a product based on the efficacy. They might not be tuned into the experience of using that product. So we believe there is a compelling rationale to think about patient preferences. If a dermatologist recommends a product to someone, they are likely to try it. However, if they do not enjoy using it, then they will switch to a different product, and this could affect overall outcomes. Dermatologists may also be basing their recommendations on traditional thinking about surfactants, and that lather can be a bad thing. 
That's why we focus on ingredient science in order to formulate products with a mild lather. We've created a mild, non-drying cleanser with a skin feel that consumers prefer and that dermatologists will want to recommend. When patients ask their dermatologist to recommend a skincare product, there are a lot of factors we might consider. Naturally, we want patients to use body washes that are highly effective at removing dirt and residue, but that also preserve the skin's natural ability to repair and restore itself. As we have learned, though, how patients think about and use their skincare products may well determine whether they continue using them over time. As it turns out, men and women have very different tendencies and practices when it comes to the care of their skin. Those factors are important to think about if we want to recommend products that are both good for the skin and something our patients will continue to use.